What do you think was the biggest reason for Elon Musk's epic Twitter failure? The richest person in the world said he wanted to own one of the most popular social media platforms until he tried to back out at the last minute. But then he changed his mind and ended up buying it for roughly $44 billion. Although it seems like he should have tried harder to back out of the deal because he's since run the company right into the ground. In less than two months, he's booted journalists from the platform, changed rules seemingly on a whim, alienated advertisers, and conveniently managed to get himself voted out as CEO. So is there any way we could have seen this coming? Let's take a look at the top 10 Elon Musk Twitter red flags we should have noticed. Number 10, he fired everyone. After Musk completed his $44 billion acquisition of Twitter, he immediately decided to fire the company's leadership team. Within hours of the takeover, we know that he fired CEO Parag Agrawal, the head of legal Vijaya Gadi, chief financial officer Ned Siegel, and many, many others. In fact, two of them literally had to be escorted out of the building that was Twitter's San Francisco headquarters. From that point on, Musk went ahead with his plans to fire 75% of the company's employees, which was roughly 7,500 staff. He then brought Tesla engineers in as advisors. He also sent a company-wide email explaining, in an effort to place Twitter on a healthy path, we will go through the difficult process of reducing our global workforce, adding that Twitter's offices will be temporarily closed and all badge access will be suspended, in an effort to help ensure the safety of employees and Twitter overall. The mass firing brought about another headache for Musk, as many came together to file a class action lawsuit against the company and its new owner, claiming that firing them would be a violation of labor laws. They demanded that the court step in and issue an order that would require Twitter to follow the Worker Adjustment and Retraining Notification Act, which states that you have to give advance notice of at least 60 days for mass layoffs in large companies. They also wanted to stop Musk from forcing them to sign documents that could give up their right to pursue legal action against the company. Number 9. The Pledge Last month, the Twitter offices temporarily closed as hundreds of employees resigned after refusing to pledge their allegiance to Elon Musk. The tech billionaire called on Twitter's remaining employees to sign up for the long hours at high intensity or pack their bags. Hundreds of workers then band together and decided not to accept his new terms. One former Twitter employee, who wished to remain anonymous, told the BBC, I think when the dust clears today, there's probably going to be less than 2,000 people left. They claimed that everyone in their team had been sacked. The person and above that was one of the executives terminated on the first day. So there's nobody left in that chain of command. Another anonymous employee who spoke to the BBC said, I didn't want to work with someone who threatened us over email multiple times about only exceptionable tweets should work here when I was already working 60 to 70 hours weekly. So what was in the pledge and why was it so demanding? ABC News has reported that hundreds have sent the salute emoji over the company's slack, which obviously means that they have walked out. Number eight, the Twitter blue subscription. Last month, the company introduced a new subscription service, and that caused absolute chaos. In an effort to make the new system a significant source of revenue for the company, Musk has opened up Twitter's blue checks to anyone that was willing to pay for them. But it turned out that this was an absolute train wreck of an idea, because it didn't take long for users to take advantage of the new system. In the hours after the blue checks were put up for sale, the platform was flooded with all kinds of verified impersonators. Big brands were hit, as an account impersonating the pharmaceutical company, Eli Lilly caused a particularly serious problem when it tweeted out, we are excited to announce insulin is free now. That tweet went viral and stayed up for at least two hours before it was taken down. The real Eli Lilly account tried to correct it, but the damage was already done. Their stock price dropped sharply, as did those of other pharmaceutical companies which were also impersonated. Celebrities also grew frustrated with the idea, as it meant losing their status symbol as public figures, because it made the blue check mark obtainable for anyone who wished to pay for it. Since then, the platform has relaunched the service, offering users verified status for $8 a month or $11 a month on their iPhone. Subscribers will apparently get more prominence on the platform and rocket to the top of replies, mentions, and searches. But this concept still remains a contentious one, and it doesn't seem like they'll ever be able to fully rid the network of impersonators. Number 7. Reinstated Donald Trump Twitter users were shocked when Musk organized a poll to determine whether or not people wish to see Donald Trump's account reinstated. Slightly over 15 million Twitter users voted in the poll, with 51.8% voting in favor of reinstatement. Musk then tweeted the results and said, The people have spoken. Trump will be reinstated. For his part, the former president appeared less than excited over the news and said that he didn't see any reason to return to the platform. If you didn't know, Trump's account was taken down after the Capitol riots in January, as he was alleged to have taken part in inciting the violence. 
Instead, Trump insisted that he was going to be sticking with Truth Social, the app developed by Trump Media and Technology Group, which he said had better user engagement than Twitter anyway, and was doing phenomenally well. Overall, Musk's decision to simply let the people decide was heavily criticized. The National Association for the Advancement of Colored People, a leading US civil rights organization, urged all advertisers to stop funding to Twitter immediately and to pause their spending after Trump's reinstatement. The NAACP's president, Derek Johnson, said any advertisers still funding Twitter should immediately pause all advertising. If Elon Musk continues to run Twitter like this, using garbage polls that do not represent the American people and the needs of our democracy, God help us all. Number six, rise in hate speech. Since taking charge, the tech billionaire set up what he calls a content moderation council that's composed of people with widely diverse viewpoints who are supposed to prevent the spread of misinformation and harmful content. But that very council that he put together seems to have already fallen through. That warning, Musk abruptly dissolved the team just moments before they were scheduled to meet with company representatives. The council was an advisory group of nearly a hundred independent, civil, human rights and other organizations that the company formed in 2016 to address hate speech, exploitation and other problems on the platform. In fact, a recent study conducted by Montclair State University confirmed that there was a spike in hate speech on Twitter since his takeover. The study tracked how often homophobic, anti-Semitic and racial hate-driven terms were used. Researchers found that about three 398 hate tweets an hour were made in the 12 hours after the acquisition were finalized, a number that nearly quadrupled from the 84 tweets an hour in the week leading up to the acquisition. Number 5. Misusing his platform Musk owns one of the most powerful social networks in the world, and he is set to become the most followed person on his own platform, but he's been called out for using his position as a means of targeting individuals that he disagrees with. It was recently reported that Twitter's former top safety official, Yoel Roth, was forced to flee his home after escalating personal attacks, specifically after Musk tweeted about his academic writing, even though he misrepresented its content. Roth was the head of trust and safety at Twitter, and he was involved in many of the platform's decisions about what posts to remove and what accounts to suspend. Over the years, Musk has made disparaging tweets about certain individuals to his tens of millions of followers, who then feel compelled to launch an attack against them on his behalf. For example, his recent condemnation of Anthony Fauci, the top US health official, has also drawn immense backlash. Musk tweeted, My pronouns are prosecute Fauci. As a result, Fauci is said that he has faced death threats from Musk's followers. In a press conference, the White House press secretary, Karine Jean-Pierre, called Musk's tweets dangerous and said that they are disgusting and divorced from reality. And we will continue to call that out and be very clear about that. Number four, the Tesla employee survey. An internal Tesla worker survey that was recently obtained by Business Insider showed that employees have become frustrated with Musk's leadership and culture within the company. Company. In fact, the results of this survey were so damning that it was also used in a shareholder lawsuit against him. And it turns out that 65% of Tesla professionals, managers, executives, and directors said that they trusted him to balance employee interests with those of the company. 67% said they believed Musk cares about the company's employees, but many other responses about him showed employees complaining about his company culture, leadership, approachability, and communication. Also, his work timelines and firings. One worker said, Elon is a technical leader of the highest order, and yet is widely seen as an unapproachable tyrant who devalues the contributions of the staff and may fire them on a whim. He treats people, the fundamental unit of a company, like any other expendable resource. Another worker wrote that they felt at any point I or anyone around me will be fired and called the company an extremely toxic environment. Third employee claimed that Musk's ego needed to change and said that he was bullying people into making unrealistic commitments. The survey essentially confirmed what Twitter employees have been saying about having him as their boss. At both companies, he's pushed workers to meet insane goals and is known for his high intensity. In the past, several former executives have come out saying that he's a difficult person to work for. Number three, the Elon Jet account. The controversy started when Musk permanently suspended an account that tracked the location of his private jet, despite the fact that he initially promised to leave it up as a part of his commitment to free speech. The Elon Jet account, which had amassed more than 500,000 followers, was run by Jack Sweeney, a 20 year old Florida a college student who used publicly available flight tracking information to build a Twitter bot that tweeted every time his jet took off and landed at an airport. Sweeney woke up on Wednesday morning to a message from Twitter informing him that his account had been permanently suspended. Apparently, Musk had been frustrated with his idea for quite some time. In fact, it bothered him so much that he personally reached out to Sweeney last December through a private message asking him to take his account down because it posed a security risk. The billionaire then offered him $5,000 to shut it down. 
but the student became emboldened and countered the offer, asking for $50,000 instead to help pay for his college fees and maybe get him a car. After some back and forth, Musk responded saying, it doesn't feel right to pay to shut this down. He also posted his justification for the new policy, tweeting, any account doxing real-time location info of anyone will be suspended, as it is a physical safety violation. The resulting scandal seemed to exacerbate the issue of his growing unpopularity as a whole. Number two, silencing journalists. Last week, the world was shocked when Musk suspended a group of tech journalists from the platform with a sketchy explanation at best and claimed that these accounts were now violating the company's rules about revealing people's location. He claimed that he did this under the guise of safety and said that these journalists had doxxed him, but we already know that this was not the real reason. In fact, it was a lot more to do with the fact that they all reported on him in an unflattering way. Lynette Lopez was a prime example of that. The business insider journalist claimed that her account was suspended after she shared court documents on Twitter, revealing that Musk had allegedly hacked and doxxed people in the past. She said, he's never been any different from that. We're just all seeing it now. The reason I felt I was suspended is because Elon didn't want them to see him as a hypocrite. And coming in at number one, users voted against him. The incident was shocked when Musk asked Twitter users whether or not he should step down as the head of the company, promising to abide by the results of his poll. More than 10 million people, or 57.5 users, voted in favor of him stepping down. Interestingly enough, he did not tweet in the immediate hours after the poll. His silence was finally broken when he responded with interesting to multiple suggestions that the results of the poll were skewed by fake accounts. Eventually, he did say that he will resign when he finds someone foolish enough to take the job, but he claimed that he will still run the software and service teams after his replacement is found. In fact, he reportedly told remaining workers that the company could see a net negative cash flow of several billion dollars in 2023 and bankruptcy is not out of the question. What do you think was the biggest red flag? Let me know in the comments below and I'll catch you in the next video.